Motherfuckers stop. <laughs> uh, I'm dead. <laughs> tired. So, tired. So you mean to tell me that you podcast or you, you're all when you're on conference calls, people call you Jeff instead of Adam. Uh, when I'm out at shoots, when I'm out shooting videos and shit, like somebody will be like, um, you know, Jeff, Jeff. <laughs> it's got to be the hair and the glasses. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's the new look. Hef, right? It's Joey yeah. Hef. They're brain- oh, so they J. Yeah. Jeff, Joey yeah. had yeah, yeah the bra- the you. brain sees Jeff, so it's it's a so it's, I understand. Well, now I'm gonna, uh, now I'm gonna see it every time that we uh that's bullshit, bro. Even in text messages, like Slim will be like, Yo, um, hit Jeff up, see if he's gonna be coming. Like, bro, you're my boy, like I know you for 20 years. You call me Jeff, like fuck out of here, man. <laughs> I feel you. It's all good, bro. Man, it's all good. So yeah, so um, oh, hey, did you want me to uh, throw in the? Uh, um, I don't know if you still rock in or what what you're doing because I haven't been catching up. But did you want me to throw this in? Um, talking about what you do for a living, or you know, what I'm saying as far as you know your background. Um, Fat Belly Films would probably be better because you that's, have the that's more of a page. marketing. It's a Facebook page. Just look it up. Um, it's more of a marketing fat belly entertainment is more for uh marketing. It's just not there yet. Whereas fat belly films are actually turning over a product. So, okay. Uh, so, you know what I mean? So like, in the edit, I'll, I'll throw it in there in the edit when we go in. So I might even yeah. just throw that little bit in too. It's in there. Scary. I mean, it's, it's a Facebook <laughs> page, you know, it's definitely a Facebook page and it's a YouTube and it's Instagram. Yeah. I'm a day late putting out the video. No, I had to research the copyright. No, I didn't get it. No, I didn't get a strike on the channel. The shit just, so what this idiot did is he went on and um, he took Yummy Gang, the song Young, Yummy Gang from uh, uh, Kanye Beats, uh, you know, from uh, ASAP Fergie and uh, um, Pharrell. Yeah, he took that beat, the song with the J's. Yeah, so it's 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 just demonetized. I can't. There's no money coming out. I don't care. I I wanted to show the the proof that he was fake as shit, and this is even more proof. Bet. Yeah, let me finish this video. All right, peace. The last thing I heard was was the band music, and then I heard the vehicle, almost the engine revving, speeding up, speeding along the route and then just heard a loud bang and and screams and cries people in pain fear and agony when this red suv raced down the parade route police say the man behind the wheel had been released from jail less than a week ago in a domestic violence case daryl edward brooks jr was free on a one thousand dollar cash bail that prosecutors now say they are reviewing because it was inappropriately low this afternoon waukesha authorities say there had been a domestic violence police call involving brooks just before the parade incident we have no information that Brooks knew anybody in, in, in the parade. But I will say this, um, we weren't able even to respond to that domestic call before it actually, um, so we couldn't even investigate it. Brooks' criminal history begins in 1999 at age 17 when he pleaded guilty to inflicting bodily harm. He has pleaded guilty, been convicted, and done time for drug violations in gun cases, domestic violence, and endangering safety, including obstructing police. Now, after what happened here on Sunday, he is looking at five first-degree intentional homicide charges with additional counts, according to police, if more victims end up dying. Brooks was free on bond after being charged with a violent November 2nd incident in which police say he was behind the wheel and ran over the mother of his child. And he was free at that time on another violent felony case from 2020. Number one, the Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call and his Assistant Attorney General Jacob Kaur. Brooks had two felony cases in Milwaukee County that were pending when the parade attack occurred. This represented two chances to get him off of the streets. In one case, a 2020 shooting, 
Judge David Fess reduced Brooks' bail to $500, resulting in him going free. Jacob Corr was the state prosecutor who appeared in court for the bail hearing. Records show the state offered Brooks a deal. Corr's boss, Josh Call, wouldn't say what the deal was. Chisholm fell on his sword over his assistant's bail recommendation and Brooks' other pending felony, but Call has said nothing about Corr. His involvement in the case has completely escaped the media's radar. Number two, Milwaukee County Court Commissioner Cedric Cornwall for setting up Brooks's bail at a measly $1,000 in a more recent pending felony case November 5th. Just over two weeks before the parade attack, in that case, Brooks was accused of running a woman over in a gas station parking lot. It was noted that Cord did not file the bail jumping charges in the 2020 case when Brooks was accused of committing the new felony at the gas station, even though he had several weeks to do so. Number three, Waukesha County Court Commissioner David Herring. Brooks also had a separate Waukesha paternity child support case that could have gotten him off the streets. But Herring refused a request from the state's child support attorney, Waukesha's Daniel Saleff to jail Daryl Brooks just five days before the parade attack, despite Brooks's extremely poor history in the case. Number four, Milwaukee County Circuit Judge David Fies, who reduced Daryl Brooks's bail to $500 in the shooting case that Cor was prosecuting when the court system couldn't meet the speedy trial request. Prosecutors recommended bail, but judges or court commissioners said it so this one is ultimately on Fies. Number five, Milwaukee County Chief Judge Mary Trigiano, whose failed management of the court system post COVID has resulted in a two year backlog and 350 backlog jury trials as of September, 2021. One of them Brooks's. If Trigiano had prioritized public safety as much as the Delta variant, Brooks would have been tried and possibly kept off the streets. Number six, Milwaukee County DA John Chilsom and his assistant prosecutor Michelle Grasso and Carol Manchester. Manchester argued for an inappropriately low bail amount for Daryl Brooks in the gas station case. Chisholm admitted contributing to Cornwall's decision to set Brooks bail at $1,000 the state made a cash bail request in the case of $1,000, which was set by the court. The defendant posted a $1,000 cash bail on November 11th, resulting in his release from custody. It was just last Tuesday that Brooks walked out of Milwaukee County Jail after posting that $1,000 bail, the case where police say he ran over the mother of his child at a gas station. Then yesterday, just a few days later, authorities charged that he ran over dozens of people on the parade route, killing five of them. A car is a weapon, they say, twice in less than three weeks. The authorities say the same man behind the wheel. Well, I was trying, I didn't know how much time we had before you had to go and if you had to pick up, you know, everybody, you know, because, you know, you do the dad thing like I do. So yeah, I'm um, not a, I'm not back on the road. I mean, until like, shit, I'm basically free to like four. If I choose to go Uber right now, that's on me. Okay. So the reason why I brought you on, Joey, is because uh, I woke up this morning and I got a disturbing, um, Actually, I didn't even load it up on here, but I got a disturbing message from YouTube saying that I had a, actually, let me put it up here, that I had a uh, copyright strike on my channel. Or not, it wasn't a strike, a copy note, copyright notice. And so, okay. um, so I was like, what the, you know, who, what, when, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm pretty thorough. So, yeah, so I went over here and I was looking, you know, it said ineligible for copyright. It was just a claim. That's it. So mm -hmm. um, when I went in to look a little further into it, I was trying to find out, you know, who, who the hell is going to claim on me and for what reason. And mm -hmm. it turns out that this clown, hold on. Actually, no, me and Santo did a, uh, uh, a little podcast regarding the view on his shitty little videos or whatever. Yeah. And uh, 
And so I got this notification and it said this was, you know, it was from uh, um, Yang Gang or Yang Gang or whatever uh, music from Kanye Beats. You know, Kanye Beats is right. Kanye Beats is uh, basically uh, ASAP, Fergie and Pharrell and their their conglomerate, you know, that make beats for, you know, their their circle of rappers or whoever they produce with or, you know, flex with or whatever. That's so what? Huh? That's pretty dope. So, that's what I thought too. So I was so what I did is I had to do that because I the way he was talking in court, he was talking how he didn't want his video shown in court. And I was like, well, why wouldn't he want his video shown in court other than the lyrics and you know what I'm saying and everything else that makes him look yeah, bad yeah, or whatever? Yeah. So um, so basically I had to say, so basically after now that I got the copyright strike, I'm like, okay, let me find out why all of a sudden I got a copyright strike. Cause when I looked it up. This dude didn't have any copyright over his music. You know, he didn't have anything on his music whatsoever. No, that's not him. That's the producer. The producer's always going to own the beat. Well, that's the thing. He didn't even buy the beats from the producer. There was nothing. Exactly, because he's a he's a janky rapper, bro. You know, I know. He stole the beats from. Thank you. So if you're digging the vibe and you love the channel podcast, if or if you want to watch the full podcast and me and Joey talking. Um, I will put it on the membership tab so you guys can peep in on what we talked about because we did give our little commentary about the video also about the music or whatever. So um, come and check that out. Uh, With that being said, it's your boy Norm. I'll see you in another video. And that's all that came of it. And then he went right back to to Wisconsin and, you know, the rest of the rest of his history. That's crazy, bro. So, yeah, so baby mama basically got snatched up as a 14-year-old, inseminated, taken away from her parents or her family in Reno, you know what I'm saying, because his father lived in Reno. He took her up north to Wisconsin to his mom and then basically played her out, had another baby mama up there, apparently, and that's what she was arguing about in court, that, you know, you you fighting with your other baby mama and blah, blah, blah. And then also fighting with me. And it turns out that the pedophile baby mama was in the women's shelter at the time of the parade. And that's where he was taking his frustration out on because the other baby mama had the probably a restraining order and wasn't allowed to be around him or whatever. Same See? thing happened with his nephew and his mom. She, he shot at the nephew right around that same time. I think it was See? like two months All prior to that. All the saws are out in the air at this point. He's no longer hiding. He's out in the open. Motherfuckers know he's a fraud. They're calling him out on his fraudulent activity. He is done. He had it was either kill himself or kill others. Plain well, look, look he's, so, he's a selfish person. Because he has so to pay child he, support. So that his tells twin me you're sister, a selfish person. His twin sister died and had two or three kids, right? The oldest one is his his little running mate that I think is the one that's in that video that we were talking about. So uh Basically, they were fighting over a cell phone two months prior to the baby mama getting hit at the gas station by the car. So uh, he shoots at, at, at him at the at the mom's house. He gets arrested and then he gets a restraining order put on him by the nephew and the mom. The mom bails him out of jail. Conflict of interest. And enabling so still, conflict and, of interest. And he was, so he was uh he was surrounded by enablers before they just stopped enabling him. Enabling mm-hmm. conflict of interest. And when he became too much for him, they just basically treated him like a stray dog and were like, open the door and was like, get in the streets. Well, let somebody honestly, else do it. Like to me, it, well, maybe, maybe I'm thinking that they just came to the wits end and was like, we're done with you. We're no longer going to enable you. You know, we're no longer going to coddle you. You know, we know you're a fraud. Oh, yeah. You don't want to work. You, you, you don't want to do this. You want to be a you rapper. Can't have an inter- you can't yeah. have an intervention with somebody with that personality type. Yeah, There's no and, intervention. Bro, he's already. Uh, yeah, that's crazy, bro. He's done. Like, he's, <laughs> you can't have an bro. intervention with crazy. If he was on drugs, that would be one thing. But the mom said he needs drugs and they're not giving him his drugs. And that's what I was didn't tell you. So after the court case, after the 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 guilty uh, verdict, um, mm-hmm. they now they got to go to sentence. So after the, gu- the guilty verdict, they interviewed the mother on her porch. And the mother explained to the reporter that they're not giving him his meds when he was locked up. And oh, that's why he's acting like a, that's what she's claiming. But there's no medical information or any document documentation. And she keeps saying having a um, 
manic episodes, like manic depressive. You know what I mean? That's what she's alluding to, but she's not saying it. She says manic episodes. So she's not saying he's bipolar or that he's schizophrenic and he has, you know, he's been diagnosed. She just says that he gets really am. And I think what it is, is it, he's been conditioned through enabling um, to get his way through bullying, just like any machoism on the right side. You know what I mean? He's on the left side or however you want to see it. Was, and he, bro, he was probably wearing basketball shorts and flip flops. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Just like in his videos. Oh, well, I don't know about yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, so man, I just wanted to I just wanted to chop it up with you, man, and, and and get your intake on the basically on the copyright issue and tell you what happened, man, because that shit was so fucking I spent a lot of time trying to figure it out for a minute and then it would click. I was like, hold on, wait a minute. Let me find out who this song is. And it, it I was like, Oh my god, this dude just ripped this shit and just try to act like it was his. Yeah, it's just like when we're making videos and we can't use other people's beats in our videos unless we get them cleared. Same shit. You know, he and, was clear. So now he's doing his own song. Exactly. Well, you know what's crazy about it too is that when it happened, um, they did the copyright strike. But if you look mm -hmm. at at the screen here, it mm -hmm. shows um, ineligible for that. But if you go down to Daryl Brooks' Garage Rap video, it has mm -hmm. twenty thousand views on that motherfucker. It's green. Uh, that's the that's two. That's a two and a half minute video. Two minute forty one second video. It's green. It's fu it's fully monetized under me. The only difference that I did is I in the middle of it I put a, you know I I did a, a I put Godfrey in the middle and he was like what an asshole or whatever in the middle of the, mm -hmm. of the cut, but it didn't change it enough. You know what I mean? Unless this was one that was his and he didn't copyright this one. It was legitimately his beat. No, nah, the person that owns the beat hit you with the flag. Well, so, yeah, on the so, set. So, so there's beat, three of the, so there's the three songs. that you have for the one that's the, the beat that you have for the one that's green, because yeah, because producers are the same way. Producers are like rappers, bro. Producers yeah. don't get BMI and ASCAP, and they'll sell you a beat, and then you can go put it online, and now you have exclusivity to that beat, but yeah. then you're not covered, so you're not you don't have BMI and you don't have have ASCAP, so you go and upload a video with said beat online with no publishing rights you have nobody has publishing rights to the beat so somebody like you norm <laughs> could go do a video get a few thousand views monetize on it and take and, and take your uh take your little incentive off of it because the producer didn't have ascap bmi or any type of any type of uh, publishing on his music and then when he sold the beat the person that he bought it from said broke rapper bought the beat and he didn't have publishing or BMI, so when he uploaded it to YouTube and they they ran it through Sand Sound Scan, nothing comes up. Nobody's getting paid for it. It's free work. Yeah, free work. Literally, it's free work. Anybody, any, this is copyright free. You know, royalty free. You know, and, and me not and me know? not being and me not being a hardcore hip hop fan like you and Santo, you know what I mean, as far as like rapping and producing and making videos and stuff like that. Because you know Santo uh made that beat for me um regarding the baby mama. Did you hear that did you hear that one that he did? Um here I'm gonna play it real quick. Listen to this real quick and, and tell me what you think. I I love this video. Reincarnation of greatness. Look a monster in their eyes. Made a promise. Never be a man that cries when he dies. I've seen it all before. I'm not surprised with they lies. And you only failed if you never tried. Treat a nigga like a bitch and eat him from the inside. Then he gon' fight with himself. I take a seat ringside. I make these niggas kill himself. I was taught to play that game tactical. Pick these niggas off mathematical. Wrapped up like Taliban. Strapped like the Yo, was that song I've been rolling all night. Mick Jagger. Yep. On like with that big dagger. I told you. Man, and then he, and what's crazy about it is he he's uh not only does he have bars but he's like so humble about the shit that he's like eh i'm on the anime you know what i'm saying even though you can hear if you listen to that he's like put so much anime into those bars right there but now he's like on some old anime level stuff or you know what he does online as far as the rebellion five and all that so yeah so yeah it's just crazy how he transitioned you know dude got some got some bars man we gotta get santo we gotta get santo a look <laughs> well i see i don't i don't know if he if he's still in that mind frame because you know how the but brain when you're young, publishing 
Like Santo got to yeah, own Santo yeah. before he can put out any music because that's how you're able to use all his music because he ain't got no sound scan, it ain't, it ain't registered. Yeah, and plus he gave me he gave me permission to use his, his stuff too. So, but oh yeah, you're good. Yeah. You're good either way. But I mean, yeah. you might have it. I'm, I might be capping. I'm just saying everything starts from there, bro. You know, when you put art out that you curate, whether that's you know whether anything you know like anything like a beat or something that you wrote or a book. Uh, you know, it's, video is a little bit different. It's starting to, you know, we're starting to, we're in a pioneer kind of, kind of wave here online and we're able to protect it, you know, through certain channels. But when it comes down to the old art, man, that's all, you know, you got to get publishing. You got to register for your publishing before you can even let anybody see it or, or, or let anybody, uh, you know, enjoy it. And access, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's still that's never gonna change. You know? Yeah, it's it's well, that's the whole reason they they invent. That's the whole reason why the colonials came up with the whole patent. You know what I'm saying? The patent exactly. office. You exactly. You know what I mean? First come, first serve. Exactly. The, the colonial. You what? <laughs> you know I'm on bit. You know I'm on point. <laughs> he said that's why the colonials. <laughs> <laughs> the colonials came up with. That's how they took the cotton gin. <laughs> So what you gonna do with this video? Um, I'm gonna chop it down, edit it up. You know, um, um, this I might just play the whole live thing on the other podcast channel because this is actually a pretty good conversation that we had, even with the you know what I'm saying the little in, in betweens. But um, basically, what I'm doing, I'm gonna I'm gonna edit it down. And I'm gonna use a portion of this for the intro into this video that I'm gonna do as far as the copyright talk, and yes. then um, and I'm gonna be roll some of it in there, and then because um, um, I'm trying to get people to transition, like I said, over to the podcast, and this kind of does it, so I'm, they can see what the podcast vibe is for parental rights, based on my vibe talking about the crime interrogations in the videos, you know, like this. So you know what I mean. So now I just need to tap into the to the uh, Facebook community as far as fathers' rights and parental advocacies, and all these guys are on there complaining about shit, and I'm just going to be like, "Yo, you want to invite to the podcast?" And it's just going to be basically just. Where you're sitting right now is going to be another gentleman sitting there or a lady sitting there explaining their story and telling how the courts fucked them over or, you know, or the tactic they use to get custody of their kids. It's like me. Fucking courts fuck me over, man. And then you fuck me. Man. Bro, bro. There's so many back. In, there's so many. And what's crazy about it is the more that it's like a Star Wars thing. The more the government tries to control and squeeze money out of everybody. The more we have in common, left and right, as far as the system, as much as we complain about how the system benefits one over the other and how one controls this part or this part, it's all tasking us all the way around. And when it comes to losing your kids, there's no discrimination as far as black, white, Mexican or whatever. They're taking your kids in court or or and or taxing you with that child support, even if the end. I don't know if you know this, but even when they take your kids in uh, court, let's say they like CPS takes your kids. Did you know that you still have to pay child support when they're in foster care? Mm 